Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here with me this evening. It is Sunday evening at eight o'clock Central Time as usual on uh, May 3rd, 2020. My name is Trevor Patrick Watkin, and I am a Chicago-based flutist, of course, and bringing this to you every single day live from ACM. We are, uh, we are a music school that have four different locations throughout the city of Chicago. We have roughly 300 students and about 23 faculty that are all working professionals here in Chicago. And uh, definitely check us out. There's a link in the description box. Uh, this is a school that I've been a part of for the last, I think seven years I've been here. So anyway, um, I, what you may not know. So, so let's talk about tonight's show. Tonight's show, once upon a time, I did music here in, in uh, music for theater here in Chicago. And uh, my first show that I did was in 2009, a production called The Black Duckling. Um, oh, before I go any further, by the way, I figured it out. Like I have my like live feed hidden, so I'm not like staring at like wondering if I am, I'm having latency issues. Uh, but I have the chat open right here so I can see you. Hi, Katie. Hi, Nathan. If you're here, especially if you're here from the Right Brain Project, please say hello. This is, hey, Sydney. Yay. Okay, so this, I'm getting better at this. Oh, speaking of getting better at this, if any of you watched yesterday's show, one problem that has just dogged me every single show has been audio issues, and I've been having some sync problems, and I finally figured it out. Of course, now that I've said that, I'm going to have all kinds of sync problems tonight, but cross your fingers. Anyway, I'm going to go back. So tonight's music is from the Right Brain Project's production of Salome, which was in 2014 and actually turned out to be... Hi, Sarah. Which actually turned out to be the final show that I did in Chicago. I started in 2009 with a show called The Black Duckling, which was a silent show. So essentially I had to score it like one would score a movie. Uh, although when you have a movie, you have different, you have different like hit points that you can actually sync up to the film because the film is a static object at that point. But when you're scoring for live actors, and I really have to give the cast credit for this. The, the cast knew that score so well that they could sort of figure out where in the music they were so that when they needed to line up a hit point, they could either slow things down or speed things up to make sure that it was, was in sync with each other. After doing The Black Duckling, I moved on to work with The Right Brain Project and did, I think, four shows with them. Uh, at that time, uh, it was led by Mr. Nathan Robel. And I got to do, that's really where I learned um, most of the skills that I have now as far as technical stuff. So what you may not know is that the music that I have used during my opening monologue for pretty much every show up till now, which is, yeah, that's actually from Salome. It's actually one of the underscores that I used in the second act. There are a couple really dialogue heavy scenes with the Jews and the Nazarenes. Um, but it's been a really useful thing to have around. So anyway, Nathan said, okay, I really want to do Oscar Wilde's Salome and I really want the music to be front and center. So that was a big project. Um, and I'm not going to lie. I'm somebody who really enjoys having written. The actual act of writing is something else altogether. It's a challenge. It is. Um, but also this. It was also from, um, from Salome. The production that we did was very sort of timeless. The costumes were designed by Megan Merrill and they sort of blended. There was, a lot of, there was a lot of shirtless, there was a lot of sheer fabrics, a lot of Grecian inspired things, but a lot of, a lot of um, like industrial elements. Our Herodias um, has this, had this beautiful ornate back tattoo and she would wore these like, really huge, you know, boots with these studs in them and everything, and even our Salome was wearing green chucks. Hence the reason why Salome's theme sounds a little bit like it was stolen from a Vince Guaraldi album. So the music, uh, I used a lot of uh, classical elements, and I also used some dubstep, which was very, very popular at the time. And even in The Dance of the Seven Veils, that famous scene in the second act, I used uh, a rhythm used rhythms that were actually taken from gunshots so anyway the production itself though for me i'm not a religious person i wouldn't even say that i'm spiritual necessarily but i have a thing about the moon 
and Mr. Robo made a very inspired choice. The the character the, the moon's not even a character in the show, but it's referenced so many times in the script that he said, you know what, we're casting her. You know, we're we're actually gonna have this as a character. And the moon in our production was played by Charlotte Long and turned out to be pretty much my favorite element of the show. Not pretty much, it was my favorite element. In fact, that it's the thing that I think about the most. Because you're taking an actor, she's not she doesn't have any words. She has no stage directions. It was all device theater. It all came from her instincts and also Mr. Robles' direction. And it was really remarkable because she was on this platform the whole time. And you knew when she came down that platform, something horrible was about to happen, which is the way it worked. Uh, another standout was Rose Robel, who played our Salome. And I think every review that we got mentioned both of them, both Charlotte and Rose. Now, reviews aren't everything, but they're not nothing. And at the very least, it was good to sort of hear a response from what we were doing. Anyway, uh, but I think the chewy caramel center of this entire show was Mr. Greg Wentz, um, who played Yopanon. Very challenging role. It's a very, it's very, uh, very hard to get to, and it's and because we were performing in a black box, he actually, just like the moon, who was on stage the entire time, so was Yokanon. And the only way that we could, con we, the only way that they could convey the fact that Yokanon was imprisoned and all of his various location changes was through lighting. And it was really inspired, but none of it could have happened without Mr. Wentz and uh, his incredible acting. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you just to, don't take my word for it, have a look at some of the images from the production and the music that I'm going to provide for you is the second part of this Dance of the Seven Veils. Charles Ann, who played Herodias, is also a marvelous dancer and choreographer and, uh, and choreographed this to my music. Have a listen. Now, I, I made a goof. Um, I neglected to credit the wonderful, wonderful cellist solo who played the, uh, the Dance of the Seven Veils, uh, Ms. Desiree Miller, who is actually also a teacher here at ACM. In fact, that show, I had pretty much just started at ACM when I, I did that show. Um, candidly, 2014 is a year that I otherwise would rather forget. I think we all have years like that, times like that in our lives. and and I really don't have a lot of memories <laughs> of writing the music. It was pretty much done in a blind panic. But I'm really grateful that I have all of this. I have these wonderful pictures. I have all of this music that I created. So it's nice to let time do its work and filter out the crap. And I just get to hold on to the good stuff. So these next two pieces are Moon and The Seduction of the Young Syrian. Moon in the production I actually gave to the English horn, and so it was actually in a different key. It was, in a, it was a semitone higher because the key that I originally wrote it in uh, really wasn't a very good uh, key for the English horn, but I'm playing it on flute tonight. 
And this was the first thing I wrote for Salome and sort of set the tone for myself. And the next is The Seduction of the Young Syrian, which is sort of like a masterclass on how not to write an underscore. It was, just, <laughs> it was just way too busy, but I'm proud of it. I mean, now that it's like outside of the show. But uh, anyway, uh, thank you so much. And uh, here we go.
I'm not gonna lie. I had a lot of fun over the last few days. Um, those were actually not the tracks that were used in the show. Um, I mean, it was the same music. I didn't add anything. But when I was, when as I mentioned, I was writing and when I was writing that show, I really didn't have my act together at all, um, <laughs> at all. And so, all of the music, with the exception of the oboe, the English horn, and um, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> All of the music, with the exception of the oboe, the English horn, and the English horn, and the cello, um, were synthesized. So the last few days, I've actually been going around and re-recording all of the piano. And so that's been a, an interesting challenge because the piano part for the young Syrian, I didn't write it for like a person to play, so that was really interesting. Anyway, um, for any of you, any, any of you here from Right Room Project, I know, Nathan, I know Nathan's here. If any of the rest of you from Right Room Project are here, thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening and for being a part of my life uh, at a time when I, it was just, it was, a, it was a rough go, but it's nice to come back at a, in a better place and play this for you. Um, tomorrow night, I am starting a new series every Monday night for the next four Mondays. I'm going to be playing a different movement from Herman Beef Tink's uh, Suite for Flute for, uh, called Seasons. So tomorrow night is spring, appropriately. It actually is the first movement of the, of the series. But I do hope that you will come back. If you like what you've heard tonight, please do consider subscribing. Um, you, please don't feel pressured in any way. I'm just glad you're here tonight. But if you feel like subscribing, please do, and just click the bell for reminders when I'm going live uh, to subscribe. There's just, there's a little flute logo in the bottom right hand corner and you can just click on that and subscribe. Come back and see me again. I'm going to be here. I'm here every single night um, at 8 p.m. And I'm just so glad that you're here and I really look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you so much. <laughs>